Hey, good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. Welcome to Friday, 10th day of July 2020. Let's take a look at what's happening here with Fay. This is the main concern that I have, and that's rainfall. The uh, flooding potential, slight risk in a pretty large population area. And uh, if we back this out and look at the other hazards from the system, um, there is some wind to worry about. I mean, the wind is 60 miles per hour, but I'm going to show you how that's distributed in just a moment. you got to understand it's not 60 miles per hour everywhere. Uh, so looking at the key messages, again, the main thing is heavy rainfall from Delaware northward into Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, and southern New England. And there could be some urban flooding areas with poor drainage, etc. But again, the good news, widespread river flooding is not expected at this time. So that's good. This is not a deep tropical system. It had its origins from a non-tropical area of low pressure. And so it's just got a little bit different DNA with it that won't really allow for a major rainfall event. Uh, the other issue, of course, tropical storm conditions. And that's a nice thin red line. Let's make that a little thicker, shall we? Uh, tropical storm conditions spreading up along the same areas. And you know what? It's more of a novelty, something different with all that you all have been going through in the Northeast since February and March and beyond. At least this is not a high impact. You know, again, if you use common sense, you know, this is more interesting than it is problematic. And, you know, the trees blowing around a little bit, some heavy rain squalls, a little choppy seas. It's kind of like a, uh, a summer nor'easter. And at least you don't have feet of snow. So as I mentioned, this got its origins down here over the Gulf as a non-tropical low pressure area. It moved inland, milled around over Georgia, came off the Carolina coast, finally kind of reformed here right off of Hatteras. And then here it is up here uh, mid-morning today. And uh, if we zoom in on it, we can see a closer look. And it's really these bands here uh, out over the ocean, well away from the center of circulation, which is in here, this is where you're going to see those 60 mile per hour winds and it's those convective bands, the thunderstorms in the atmosphere that help to bring the wind down to the surface. So anytime you see these uh, little uh, yellow speckles, that's lightning uh, detected by the GOES-16 lightning detector. It's got a more fancy term than that. And it's going to be within those areas that you see uh, the stronger winds. And some of these cells, as they rotate on shore, might produce a brief, weak tornado, but it is something you need to keep in mind, but something you don't have to worry about. This is not a widespread tornado producer, but the risk of tornadoes is not zero either. So there's the center uh, trying to, it's interesting because it kind of pinwheeled around inside of this larger envelope in here. You see that? And the whole thing is headed towards southern to southeast New Jersey, and this entire area will make landfall moving up through the Hudson Valley overnight, uh, late tonight through tomorrow. So kind of a rainy, breezy weekend across this region. And again, the biggest thing is from these heavier bands. So I'm going to tell you what, if you got radar scope or you're, you know what you're looking at, you know, if you're one of these uh, weather geeks that really knows what to look for, Look for those heavier radar returns, and we can look at that on a weather service map in a moment. And if one of those comes over you, your wind will probably pick up. A couple other things to point out. Look at all this, this orange down here. Uh, this is all your heat. Heat advisories, heat, uh, excessive heat warnings, etc. Very, very hot with this large heat dome setting up over the lower 48. And that's a story for another day, but very, very hot. And as long as you have that big heat dome... We're not going to have any tropical activity uh, anytime soon, so there's that. Uh, so just kind of zooming in here to the northeast, I want to click on um, New York so we can just see you know, tropical storm warning there in the red, and the green, of course, is your flash flood watch. And then here's where you look at your radar, and you go to the weather.gov site, and you click on radar. And any of these uh, higher reflectivity areas through here, that's where the wind is going to come up just a little bit more, especially right along the coast. Um, you know, maybe up from, it certainly is north of Atlantic City. I mean, most of the precip's north of there now. So up, you know, Belmar points north from there. Uh, western Long Island, eventually across Long Island Sound. 
right along the exposed areas. That's where you're going to get your, your heavier bands of rain accompanied by stronger wind. And none of these in the radar reflectivity look like they would be tornado producers. Typically, the tornado producing storms in tropical cyclones have sort of this kidney bean shape to them like that, roughly. You see these cells come in individually, um, and I don't really see too much of that down here. I mean, there's one little group right there by itself. But they typically ride out in front of the storm, and they'll, be, they'll look like that, you know, kind of isolated and not necessarily embedded in a band. You never know. Each tropical system is different, but over history, that's what we look for. And it's just a very low threat. We can see that reflected in the Storm Prediction Center. Slight risk for severe weather, tornadoes in this case. In fact, you know, what is the risk? Well, it's 5%, you know, so if you had 100 uh, ping pong balls and, you know, you had 5% of them, five of them, right, as a yes and all the rest no, eh, that's not too bad. You got a 95% chance of not having to deal with a tornado. That's not how it really works, but it's a low probability. Uh, and just for what it's worth, enhanced storms up over the high plains. I wish I could, you know, I'm torn. Uh, and you might be asking, you know, why aren't you up here? Well, a big part of it is I'm in North Carolina, and they ask you if you come from the Carolinas, I do believe, and travel up here, you need to quarantine for 14 days. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go against that. That's part of it. And part of it is it's not that large of an event. It's not a high-impact event. Nobody's evacuating. There's not much for me to contribute. You know, it's a big uh, expense, and I figure I can wait till later when we know what's coming. You know, it's coming, right? And plus, a lot of you are tackling it on social media, and you're doing a great job. And, uh, in fact, I'll pull that up in just a moment if my uh, browser will let me. Anyway, enhanced risk of storms for what it's worth here. Uh, I would like to, if I could fly from Wilmington over here, sure, uh, a good set of thunderstorms up there in the high plains. That's interesting. Anyhow, let's move along. Look at the wider picture. You can see Fay uh, up here along the northeast coast and uh, some convection scattered around Central America, some debris convection down here, nothing to worry about. Uh, tropical wave, you can see it's turning just a little bit, a little bit of rotation in there. But the dry air, very prevalent through here, still have the Saharan air layer. Yes, that is something that holds on usually through July. But boy, we're seeing the signs of this West African monsoon set up. And we are going to see some robust tropical waves. I think it's just a matter of time. We're only on July 10th here. Okay, we've basically gotten through the first third of the month. And you watch what happens as we get towards that last third. I believe we're going to see some activity pick up in this area. And I still think we're going to get one, possibly two or three depressions or higher in this zone somewhere. Uh, that's not going to surprise me at all. But it's not any time soon because the stability is still too much out here. It's just the air's just too stable, too much dry mid-level air. And we're not there yet, but I do think it's coming uh, eventually. Hey, real quick, in the eastern Pacific, Christina, very large tropical cyclone, tropical storm, still not a hurricane, and it may not make it to hurricane strength. Wow. Uh, all of this, the way the water looks up here, or the satellite imagery, we know that's water because we know our geography, right? But these gradations you see here, these different grays, you see that through there? Those are the different... Um, temperatures of the water, the satellite is sensitive enough that it can see the water temperature, so to speak. Um, it's picking up heat. This is infrared. And uh, Christina is headed towards colder water. And it may not make it to hurricane strength. Wouldn't that be something? So real quick, uh, I like the GFS here as we take a look at what's happening with Fay. And uh, this is from, uh, you know what, I think that, let's, yeah, this is the 12Z today. Um, so this is the latest run. It moves on up into Jersey, uh, the center of it, and, uh, you know, the rain quickly kind of goes away. So once it really loses that tropical connection, uh, the Gulf Stream is farther south down, down here. Whoops, I almost screwed that up. Let's scooch it down there. The Gulf Stream runs this way, and uh, Faye left the Gulf Stream long ago. So the 
high octane energy source is gone. And so as this moves up, uh, it's going to lose a lot of its punch. And you see even these isobars not packly, packly tight, <laughs> not tightly packed. And so it's not real breezy. Maybe some heavy rains here as you get into the higher terrain. Uh, as this depicts, this is a six hour average precip rate. And that shows me those oranges in there that some pretty heavy rain in some areas, but not a big deal. Again, kind of quote, enjoy it. It's novel. It's different. It's different than what we've had to deal with, like I said. And, you know, kind of sit out on the front porch and take a look at it. It's the most interesting thing to happen since the, uh, the pandemic, right? We don't have sports to speak of. So, and at least it's not a big hurricane. Um, real quick, let me see if I can pull my Twitter up, if this will let me. Yay! I was a little worried. Sometimes my toolbar over here prevents me from clicking on stuff. Um, so people have been tagging me uh, in Twitter, uh, talking about it. This is from Chase. He's one of our Patreon supporters as well. A look from his area. And I like what he says here. The wind and rain about an hour and a half ago. It's not much overall, but still nice to look at three hours ago. And that's what I'm talking about. It's just kind of different. It's not too bad. You know, there's some flooding. Yes, there could be impacts that are not uh, nice to look at, but this is not terrible. And as long as you don't drive your truck through there at a high speed or do anything dumb, you'll be all right. And uh, chase up kind of early this morning, you know, and uh, that's what I would do. So there you go. Uh, so tag me on uh, the Twitter and elsewhere. And we'll see what we get, right? I'd love to see it. Hey, you've been waiting for it. A lot of you, I know. I finally uh, have put our 2018 documentary on YouTube. Um, it is a project that is supported, was supported, and is still supported by our crowdfunding group, our patrons, our Hurricane Track supporters over the years. It's The, the story of 2018 is more than just the hurricanes mainly Florence and Michael, but it's the project. It's the 14-year evolution of the Unmanned Camera Project. And uh, here it is. It's on, I uh, put it on YouTube. Um, it's got ads. It's got commercials in it because I've got to be able to, you know, earn a living. I have a right to do that. I would hope you would agree. Uh, but here it is. You can check it out. Uh, this is just kind of skipping through the timeline, show you what I got. And, uh, Anyway, let's just X that out because it's buffering. <laughs> Slow internet, I guess. But look, if you want something to do on a Friday night and you haven't seen it yet, it's on YouTube. It's publicly available. Yes, you may share it. Go right ahead. And it's a, it's a, a monumental project. By the way, I'm working on the 2019 edition of looking back at a hurricane season. Put it, you know, but it's not called tracking the hurricanes anymore. It's called the Hurricane Highway, and it's a completely different format, which I'm going to talk about more after July 15th, and we'll talk about when that's going to be available as well. All right, so there you go. Uh, so have a great weekend ahead. Uh, stay safe out there in everything that's going on. Without you watching, there's no reason for me to be here. And that being said, I appreciate you being here and tuning in to listen to me. Uh, I am on Twitter at Hurricane Track, YouTube slash Hurricane Track, you know, it's the brand, Hurricane Track, and we are supported by Patreon. Have a great rest of your Friday. Thanks for watching and listening and all that. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you some more throughout the weekend.